Hello everyone, this is Share Talk and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about the cheer list. We just made an update and we added the newest styles from Joe's Banner. We can see Joe's Banner with Joe being placed in this position, Dora placed it here, and Gwen placed it here. There's also the newest Snowwell, the free one. He's very strong for starting accounts, he's just here as well. But the thing is, we need to change some stuff based on Word Tower performance as well. We made some changes already, I'll be explaining the changes we made, and I want to see some discussion. Please say here in the comment section if you don't agree. I also wanted to know something that I heard some complaints during the uh, last update. Some people were saying that they don't agree with some of the triple S cheers. They believe that it should be a small amount of styles, not just all of these. Uh, some people don't think that Mirza still deserves a triple S. Some people don't think Coppelia deserves one, and some people even say that Nala's daughter don't deserve one. Also, there is a case for Joe. This is the very first style of Joe, and she just got her second. Uh, eventually, going from now on, we'll be using this Joe as an inheritance for the first one. The first one is still is the best AoE farmer. And she will fit in more scenarios and more squads than this one here. This one will be used for boss fights. So 95% of the game or even more than that is just farming. So yeah, I do believe that she still deserves to be on the top because she's the first character that I think when I want to kill something in one turn with a fast attack. Her coverage between cold and heat still means a lot. It can hit for many different enemy types and races. So, uh, Mirza is still a very powerful addition to any party when claiming the tower. So, you can see that while he breaks the normal standards for healing in the game, and maybe Leon does it better because he also has a chance to buff the party if you want with his second skill with 13 VP, Mirza still is the best Steel Blade Light when using uh, against bosses because he can self-heal with his counter and he can also negate damage. But it may be a case for downgrade pretty soon. And uh, Coppelia has a very powerful attack with punishing combo. She also has an option for buying inheritance, but we are not taking into consideration here. But some people don't agree. Uh, if we want to decrease her, we can decrease her to the likes of this row here, close to the other very powerful units after the great uh, the buffers, they are Princess White Rose and Beauty. This is something that we can do as well. Depends on the opinion of people, as we can discuss. Uh, I do believe that Global Axe Rock Bouquet just saw a very good increase in usage in Tower because we can finally use her in her full extent. Against Creator, she's very strong. She can debuff exactly what we need. And then when she can debuff again, because that boss has a Dare Sword, you cannot debuff it too much or else it just cleanses. It just shows how good she is. Her skill number one, that is zero BP for both Light and Dark, is also very powerful now if you upgrade her weapon. I do believe that she still deserves to be here. The other people said that Coppelia does not deserve because her cyclings are not as good as Red. And also another reason why Red is here is because of his agility buff. We can discuss this. I used Coppelia more than Red in the tower. Yes, I did because some stages only had two waves and sometimes I was using uh, also a very strong turn one killer like Joe or Creator, depending on the stage. And then uh, I prefer to have a debuff to SDR than just keep attacking like Red attacks. So this is another case. And also she cleanses on the end of a turn. I don't know. Maybe I believe that she still deserves to be here, but if she can be reduced. Uh, the other character was Nal's daughter, but yeah, in hard content, I still believe she's good. We need even two buffers sometimes to allow to hit enemies. The enemies were just so fast. Their agility was just so high. That they were evading almost any type of attack before we can start buffing. And buff is still for overpowering this game in some of the only ways to clear tower very high stages, okay? So, another thing that we changed, uh, we have now this version of Grey here, he was placed around this point, but I do believe that he deserves to be here, he's a very strong attacker for, yes, only one turn, he has engaged a passive that only works for one turn, but also has a very strong nuke for slash and cold. I have been using him for farming and he can kill some enemies the other people cannot. His cold nuke is pretty powerful, and if you want to use that Code Nuke with his other style for boss fights, maybe. You can even use this other version of him that does not have Engage. It's better for boss fights. But if you want to use three AoEs one after another, this guy 
he is very powerful. And also another thing is that Apollo showed how strong he can be in tower content. He's a slow burn character that gets stronger within time and his paralyze is not that costly with 8 VP. He can paralyze the whole field if he stacks his intelligence enough and also gets buffed by the other buffers. So uh, he was very strong in tower and he deserves a new upgrade because tower now exists. We cannot place a character high in the tier list if it, the content where it shines is not available yet. But now that it's available, I do believe that Apollo deserves an upgrade. Uh, some people made the same case for a top hat creator, but I still don't think that this guy is so powerful because he does not even have a 3BP cycle without inheritance and uh, repent is too costly, 13BP, imagine trying to inflict confusion and if you fail, you cannot even do it again, even if you stack 20BP, it takes too much, you have to rely on his chase chance to try to inflict confusion again, he does not have the self-intelligence buff like Apollo and Apollo inflicts Paralyze, Paralyze is uh, kinda easier to inflict but sometimes has more resistance than Confusion and Petrify. But, I don't know, if you guys think that this guy deserves to be placed higher, please also say here in the comment section so we can discuss. There was also a case we were discussing, me and Jai, about Dora, if Dora is better than Genryu or not. In my opinion, Genryu is a better whole investment for the future because it has another style and even can use the powerful nuke in one turn. So thinking about the future, Genryu has more importance, but Dora has a case. Dora do not need Joe. Genryu is too reliant on Joe to, to become stronger and also because of his cycling options. He not, does not have a weak or cheap AoE to keep attacking with AoE. Dora can. Let's say that you are using Joe. You can clear the first wave with Joe. Dora will attack on the second one. And then on the third one we have Joe with Inheritance from the El Nino with this one here. And also Dora has a cheap AoE. Not so cheap, but at least can attack... Uh, once after the nuke, and maybe sometimes you can clear just with those two. But if you need extra help, you can just add another character. But this is not something that you can do with Genryu mo uh, too much often, unless there's only one or two targets in the last wave. Dora does not need Joe. You can also just open with Global X Emilia that has lightning damage. You can also just use the Green Creator that has lightning damage, and even Gwen. But Gwen has weaker and stranger cycles when compared to Dora. That's why Genryu was placed. Sorry, Gwen was placed here. Gwen is weaker and also has a problem with cycling. The same problem that Genryu has, but with lower damage. Gwen will be interesting to add if you want. To uh, to do more damage against some enemies with very high endurance, but this is still not that important. It does not affect that much damage. Decreasing endurance by 10% does not mean you are getting 10% more damage. Guys, it does not work like that. Sometimes it may be even just 5% increasing damage. You have to try this out. Uh, there are some enemies like Azra that does have a lot of endurance and it makes more sense, but still, it's very rare and maybe you are just bringing Gwen to help other people do more damage because Gwen as itself is not that strong as some of the other dragons. But still plenty of damage and deserves to be on this place. Just not better than some of the others that are on the front for different, well, uh, reasons. We also got some styles that got very strong in the tower, like Taria. Taria is better than this version of uh, Thomas. It's because she has a self buff of intelligence allowing her to Petrify, and on the high stages of tower, Taria was very good. Not just her, but also Vaganus, and that sh just shows that Vaganus is a very good status inflictor. Although some of his passives would never allow him to be a very strong nuker, he's a very well around character that can help in many different situations with different kits and different setups. That's a character that has many on his disposal. Very similar to what Apollo does in the end, but uh, I do believe that Vaganus works in more content than Apollo. Apollo, just better on long runs. And these are the changes that we made, actually. Uh, I don't think there's anything that's so important or impactful. Those were the, the changes that deserve it to be discussed here. Do we agree with Dan? Do you don't agree? Please say here in the comments, let's discuss this all. And also, we should have a live stream in the weekend. And if you guys want to talk about and give some more feedback, we will listen and try to change this and make it this better. We are on the way of uh, updating the images of all the styles. So to start the whole tier list, it's still not ready, but we will do that. And eventually it will be better to have 
the different tier lists for each role type so we know which one is the best slash attacker which one is the best uh, status i meant inflictor and but for now this is a general tier list just to help people understand the value of some characters in uh, if you agree or not again please see here in the comment sections i just want to thank you so much for watching this video please subscribe if you haven't if you want to support the channel there are links in the description of the video hope to see you soon in the next episode bye